What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Movie Raise. Legacies premiered on The CW back in 2018, and in that short amount of time, the series has managed to lay the framework for some of the best storytelling we've ever seen. The supernatural fantasy drama stands to be one of the best series the network has put out, rivaling major hits like Riverdale. Though there has been a lot of drama going on behind the scenes that have nearly jeopardized the entire show on multiple occasions. Fights between cast members and Twitter feuds are just a few of the things that have nearly killed the show, but today we will be taking a look into some of the darkest secrets and drama from Legacies thus far. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Matthew Davis Twitter Controversy In fact, I would have said that supernaturals were limited to the species under this roof. One of the biggest moments of drama from the Legacies cast came from Matthew Davis. If you're a fan of the show, I'm sure you've heard the stories about Matthew by now, but it's still super important to outline what happened because there is a lot of misinformation going around lately. So Matthew Davis obviously plays the role of Alaric in Legacies. He has been with the show since the very beginning, taking on this role in Vampire Diaries, the originals, and now Legacies. After the season finale in March of 2020, Matthew came under fire after he posted a few insensitive tweets online. Many people believed the tweets were super racist, and that definitely seems to be the case. Most of the tweets Matthew posted seem to have been politically motivated. If you remember when Trump was president, there was a major political divide in America that villainized people who were both conservatives and Republicans. Regardless of where you stand, Matthew was being targeted because most people perceived him to be a Republican. He had tweeted about his support for Trump many times, but this reached a boiling point when he began to target China, claiming China was responsible for the outbreak of the pandemic. Even though we know that Chinese citizens had nothing to do with the virus, Matthew wasn't so easily convinced. He changed his Twitter header to read Boycott China and even went as far as posting a drawing of the COVID-19 virus with the label China virus. To make matters even worse, if they weren't bad enough already, he posted another video that shows the Grim Reaper knocking on a door that read World while carrying a Chinese flag. Though Matthew still wasn't done. He went one step further and posted about how he wanted to hold China accountable for releasing the worst pandemic the world has seen in more than 100 years. Geez, if you think that's a lot, you haven't seen anything yet. Matthew was insistent on ending his career right then and there and continued to post political tweets over the next few days, weeks, and months, digging himself a hole he wouldn't soon get out of. He decided to alienate himself even further during the vice presidential debate when he tweeted about how the moderator continued to cut off Mike Pence in the middle of his statements, though others say the moderator was cutting him off because Mike was refusing to answer the question. He would later continue to post about his support for Trump. Regardless of Matthew's political goals, it seems his tweets about China put the final nails in his coffin. Immediately afterward, the hashtag Matt Davis is over party began to trend on Twitter. A petition was filed to get Matthew removed from Legacies, but it doesn't seem like the CW has made any announcements on what they plan to do. For now, it seems like Matthew will be staying with the show, which is quite shocking considering today's cancel culture issues. Jenny Boyd and Kaylee Bryant's unlikely friendship It's not always easy making friends in Hollywood. It's a pretty cutthroat industry and almost everyone is in it for themselves. Because of this, it can obviously be pretty hard to make friends when auditioning for new roles, especially in a series as popular as Legacies. When Jenny Boyd showed up for auditions, the last thing on her mind was making friends. She went to the audition with one thing in mind, winning the role she was trying out for. However, Kaylee Bryant was quite the opposite. Kaylee seems to be an open book, and it seems like she had every intention of making friends when she showed up for auditions. The problem is that these two had to read through lines together so the casting department could see how their chemistry was. According to Jenny, she felt like Kaylee was doing everything within her power to either steal her role or get her cut from the series. While we know this wasn't true, Jenny got super angry with Kaylee and refused to even speak to her if they weren't reading through lines. Jenny was so upset that as soon as they took a break, she hid in the bathroom so she wouldn't have to speak with Kaylee. We don't know for sure why Jenny was getting such aggressive vibes from Kaylee. Kaylee seems like such a sweetheart. But boy, what I would do to have been a fly on the wall during that audition process. It sounds tense. Area Shegasemi's Identity Crisis 
I don't do this for the riches. I'm infected. My condition is I'm always in my head. Moving to a different state or city can be very hard, especially if you're unfamiliar with your surroundings. But imagine moving to a new country, maybe even a new continent. That's exactly what Aria's parents had to go through. When Aria's mother was just 21 years old, she moved here with her father. It wouldn't be long before they would give birth to Aria, making him the first person in their family to be born as an American citizen. While Aria is, by every definition, American, his ancestry takes him back to Iran. Both of his parents are native-born Iranian citizens, so it was understandably difficult for Aria to grow up in America, especially in the early 2000s. Aria says that he struggled with his identity for most of his life and continues to struggle from time to time today. He wants to do his best to represent his native culture, but considering how intolerant certain people can be, things get very difficult for him at times. He says that he had a difficult time in school because everyone saw him as being different, mostly because of his name. This led to him asking everyone to call him Ethan, with him to great lengths to hide his real identity. What's crazy is that he even did his best to hide his native language. He says that he will often speak to himself in his native tongue, yet when talking with other people, he exclusively speaks in English. Even when he goes home to visit family, he only responds in English, regardless of what language his parents use. Iranian culture runs deep in his family, and Arya says his mother still refuses to accept his acting career as a real profession. Even though he is on national television, his mother will often ask him if he wants to return to school or get a higher education. Some cultural boundaries can be very hard to break. Though more recently, Arya has been doing his best to come out of his shell and embrace his heritage. He has been working alongside several production companies to share stories of his nationality and the struggles he faced when moving to America. One of the documentaries he has appeared in is specifically targeted at people of color, such as people who may have moved to the United States from countries like Mexico, Japan, Russia, Iran, China, and many others. Arya says the guilt of abandoning his culture and trying to take on a new identity runs deep. Even though he was raised in Minnesota, he says it is very difficult for him to say that he was from Minnesota, considering all of his family members were born and raised in Iran. It's great to see him finally coming out of his shell after all these years. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos.